compound to be analyzed, our unknown sample. And the reaction is going to look something like this. Add oxygen to it, and oxygen gas is O2. And you're going to make carbon dioxide and H2O. And here's what I would like to suggest as the reason why combustion analysis works. So if you have carbon on the reactant side, you can see it only comes from one place right here. There is no carbon in oxygen. So carbon is right here. So mathematically, I can then say that the coefficient in front of carbon dioxide is x. So, and these two numbers are the same number because all of the carbon from the reactant side is here, and all of the carbon from the, on the product side is here. There is a direct relationship between the amount of carbon dioxide produced and the amount of carbon that you start with. Further, we can say the same thing about y, except we have to put y over 2 over here because y is the subscript on hydrogen, and hydrogens come two at a time in H2O, so y divided by two times two means that I have the same number of H's on the product side now as I have on the reactant side. And that's a way of saying that uh, when I work the problem on the next page, I'm going to take my amount of carbon dioxide and use it to figure out the amount of carbon in my unknown. And I'm going to take the amount of H2O and use it to figure out the amount of hydrogen in my unknown. Okay. Now we can't do that for oxygen. Oxygen is more complicated. First off, oxygen is everywhere in all of these. And second, oxygen is added and we will see that oxygen is added so that there is extra. And we will say that oxygen is in excess. And so all I want to say for now is that there's no relationship for Z that we can make to help us find out Z using the same type of calculations. We'll come up with a different way to find oxygen. So this is a schematic of the process. Now let's look at an actual problem. It says tartaric acid is the white powdery substance that coats tart candies such as Sour Patch Kids, which my daughter loves. Can't say I'm a huge fan, a little too sour for me. It says combustion analysis of a 12.01 gram sample of tartaric acid, which contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, produced 14.08 grams of carbon dioxide and 4.32 grams of H2O. What is the EF, empirical formula, of tartaric acid? All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grams of CO2. And like I was saying, anytime you have grams of something, you're almost assuredly in this course going to turn it into moles. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And if you're on an exam uh, and you have no idea how to solve this problem, the guess, and the guess would be turn grams into moles and see if it gets you closer to the answer. And I would guess that you would get plus two points on your exam or a quiz just for doing that, even if you don't know why. Uh, I'm sure you will. But here we go. So carbon dioxide has a molar mass of 44.01 grams per one mole. And just as a quick uh, reminder, carbon dioxide, 12.01 for one carbon times and plus 2 times 16 for oxygen, that's going to be my 44.01. All right. Periodic table goes over there. Now, uh, I'm going to do one step that won't change the math, but will make my units work out nicely. In one mole of carbon dioxide, there is one mole of carbon. And I know it doesn't change the math, but we're going to be looking for moles of carbon in our 
tartaric acid or white powdery substance. So that's why we do it. And if we do the math here, 14.08 divided by 44.01, I get 0 0.320, uh, rounded to three sig figs, moles of carbon. Now, um, I also need grams of carbon, so I'm gonna do that next. And I haven't told you why, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. In one mole of carbon, There are 12.01 grams of carbon, and again, that's using the numbers from the periodic table. And whenever I do calculations, whatever I write down is what I actually calculate. You should feel free to carry more digits for your intermediate steps uh, during calculations. Uh, but uh, I will always do exactly what I write here. So 0 0.32 times 12.01, 3.84. Grams of carbon. Uh, and uh, one thing I mentioned last time, but I'll mention it again for lecture, uh, for everything but lab, three sig figs is always fine. For lab, we will do sig figs and uh, keep track of our calculations very carefully. All right, so now we know how many grams and moles of carbon are in or unknown. Now let's do uh, the same thing for uh, H2O. We're gonna turn grams of H2O into moles of H2O using the molar mass. And then this time, for every one mole of H2O, there are actually two moles of H. And that's because there's this subscript two in here. Uh, 4.32 divided by 18.02 times 2, 0 0.479 moles of hydrogen, and uh, I'll just do times the 1.008 grams per mole from the periodic table, and I get 0 0.483. Uh, sorry, grams of hydrogen. Those are grams of hydrogen. Okay. Any questions so far? If not, then uh, there's one element that we still have to find. That element is oxygen. And here's what we know about oxygen. If we come back to this picture. So now in our unknown, we know the grams of the unknown, we know the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen. And the only thing we don't know is our grams or moles of oxygen. But if we know the total unknown and we can subtract off these two, we'll be left with our grams of oxygen. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna call this find grams of oxygen. And the technique is to take our mass of our sample subtract off our grams of carbon subtract off our grams of hydrogen and we will be left with grams of oxygen let's see here we go 